ever wondered where the dazzling neon tetras hail from? Picture this, the untouched heart of South America, where tranquil waters of the Amazon basin meander. These aren't just ordinary waters. They're dark, tea-tinted streams, thanks to nature's own alchemy of decaying leaves, releasing tannins. Amidst this shadowy realm, the neon tetras' vibrant colors burst forth, like living jewels darting about. Above, the forest canopy plays light games, filtering sun rays and casting a mystical glow beneath. Now imagine not just one, but thousands of these shimmering wonders moving in sync, creating an underwater ballet. That's right, Neon Tetras love company, and in their native habitat, they form mesmerizing schools, a sight to behold. But it's not all about beauty. These waters are alive with microscopic feasts, tiny organisms, minute crustaceans and wriggly worms, the preferred menu for our neon stars. Amidst lush aquatic plants, they find shelter, love, and of course, food. So you're into neon tetras. Cool choice. These fish are like little glowing gems straight from the Amazon. Think of it this way. We're bringing them from their big Amazon home into our tanks. Neon tetras are super adaptable and can handle change. But if you want them to be at their best, you've got to make them feel at home. Everything about a neon tetra, from their bright colors to the way they move, comes from where they grew up. Imagine a calm stream with a soft sandy bottom, leaves in the water, making it look like tea, and shadows from trees above. That's their jam. Why make your tank like this? It's simple. When tetras feel at home, they light up even more, and they act like they would in the wild. You'll see them group together, look for food, and maybe even do their special dances. And here's a bonus. When they're happy, they live longer. Plus, if you ever want to see baby tetras, setting up the right environment is step one. So let's make our tetras feel right at home. Ready to dive into the world of neon tetras? Let's set up a tank that'll make these little guys feel right at home. We're aiming for spacious, not cramped. Even though neon tetras are small, they need room to move. We're talking at least a 20 gallon tank. That's around 75 liters. This gives them plenty of room to swim in their signature schools. Thinking bigger, more friends or more space equals a 30 gallon, that's about 113 liters, or even larger tank. The more, the merrier. Shape-wise, we want long, not tall. Neon tetras are sprinters, not climbers. They like to move back and forth, not up and down. So a long horizontal tank mimics the wide open space of their natural habitat. And when we talk about the tank's footprint, we mean the base area. A larger footprint means more space for all the tank's cool features, plants, rocks, and hiding spots. When it comes to tank material, you've got two main choices, glass or acrylic. Glass is the classic choice. It's crystal clear, so you see your neon tetras in all their vibrant glory without any weird distortions. It's also durable and stands the test of time, but it does have some weight to it. So if you're eyeing a larger tank, be prepared for it to be a bit on the heavier side. And, like all glass, if it takes a hard hit, it can break. Then there's acrylic. It's lighter than glass and can handle bumps and knocks better. Plus, it can be moulded into all sorts of cool shapes. The downside, it can get scratched up more easily than glass. But don't stress too much. Many of those scratches can be buffed out. Positioning. All right, you've picked your material. Now, where do you put this thing? First things first, you need a sturdy spot. Water's heavy. We're talking about 8.34 pounds per gallon or one kilo per litre. So, a filled 20 gallon or 75 litre tank. That's over 166 pounds or around 75 kilo. And that's without the gravel decorations or the tank itself. Keep the tank out of direct sunlight. Yes, sunlight makes things look pretty, but too much of it and you're signing up for an algae takeover. Plus, neon tetras don't like their home turning into a sauna with temperature spikes. Temperature. First up, let's talk warmth. Neon tetras are tropical divas. They like it warm, cozy, and consistent. Aim for a sweet spot between 72 degree and 82 degree. That's 20 soak degree C to 28 degree C for the metric folks. You see, wild neon tetras don't have someone fiddling with their thermostat. Their waters stay pretty stable. So, if the temperature in your tank is doing the char-char with ups and downs, it's gonna stress out your fish. The fix, get a good aquarium heater. Make sure it's the right fit for your tank size. And don't just trust the heater's settings. Double check with an aquarium thermometer. Also, think about where you're placing the tank. Avoid spots that get blasts from heaters, AC units, or direct sun. 
Those can mess with your temperature big time. pH level. Now on to the pH. This is all about how acidic or basic your water is. Neon tetras have a preference here. They like their water slightly on the acidic side to neutral. That means a pH of around 6 to 7.5. It's kind of like their comfort food, but for swimming. Keep tabs on the pH with regular tests. If it's too high, driftwood or peat moss can help bring it down by adding natural tannins to the water. Too low? Crushed coral or some pH adjusters can nudge it back up. But remember, it's like adjusting the seasoning in a recipe. Do it bit by bit. You don't want to give your Tetris a pH roller coaster ride. The right mix of plants, substrate and decorations isn't just about the Instagram shot. It's about giving your neon Tetras a slice of Amazonian paradise. Plants, let's talk greenery. Neon Tetras are used to living in leafy underwater jungles. Leaf plants in your tank aren't just eye candy. They're mini oxygen factories, hide and seek spots, and sometimes snack bars for tiny critters the Tetris love. Some top plant picks to consider, Java fern, Anubias, Amazon sword, and water wisteria. They're like the popular kids in the world of aquatic plants. Substrate, next, the floor. Think of a soft sandy beach, that's what neon tetras love. It's soft on their fins and lets them play around, sifting through the grains just like in their Amazon home. And here's a pro tip, dark colored sand can make your tetras colors pop. It's like turning up the contrast on your TV. Decorations, time for the finishing touches, driftwood and rocks. They're not just decorations, they're like the Neon Tetras version of secret hideouts and jungle gyms. They can chill, hide and even claim territories. Plus, driftwood has a bonus. It can help tweak your water's pH. If you're feeling extra, toss in some caves or hideouts. Especially if you're thinking of baby Tetras down the line. They offer cozy spots for laying eggs. One last thing, when you're picking out decorations, think safe. No sharp edges or questionable materials. We're going for a cozy, safe, Amazon-inspired haven here. Let's chat about one of the unsung heroes of any fish tank, the filtration system. If your neon tetras are the stars of the show, think of the filter as the backstage crew, making sure everything runs smoothly. Mechanical filtration. This is your tank's first line of defense. It's like a vacuum cleaner, scooping up all the gunk and debris. Sponge filters, powered by an air pump, are a fantastic choice here. They're gentle on your neon tetras and do a stellar job trapping dirt, but if you fancy a bit more power, especially for larger tanks. Hang on back filters might be your jam. They sit snug on your tank's edge, pull water in, clean it up and pour it back, all neat and tidy. Biological filtration. Now here's where science gets cool. Tiny helpful bacteria break down the nasty stuff in the water like ammonia and nitrites. Canister filters sitting outside the tank are champs at this. They've got room for a bunch of media, which these bacteria call home. Under gravel filters are another neat choice. They chill under the substrate, turning it into a bacteria-friendly zone. Chemical filtration. Think of this as your water's spa treatment. Stuff like activated carbon gets rid of impurities, making your water crystal clear. Internal filters right inside your tank can handle this. And our multitasker, the canister filter, can also step in for some chemical action. A quick note for our neon tetras, they're not fans of strong currents. So, the gentler, the better. Sponge filters are a top pick for this reason. But if you've got a bustling tank community, maybe consider a canister or HOB filter. Just make sure it's not creating a whirlpool in there. You know how we humans love a good varied meal? Neon Tetras are no different. Imagine if we ate just one type of food every day. Sounds boring, right? And definitely not the healthiest choice. The same goes for our neon buddies. These fish are natural omnivores. This means they snack on a little bit of everything from tiny critters like invertebrates and worms to bits of plants. This mix gives them all the good stuff they need, proteins, fats, and essential vitamins. So why does their diet matter so much? For starters, food plays a starring role in making them glow even brighter. Yep, the right grub can boost their already dazzling colors, but it's not just about looks. Proper nutrition means they're on their A-game, zipping around the tank, schooling with their pals, and just being their lively selves. Plus, a good diet is their shield, helping them ward off illnesses. Now we've established neon tetras like a varied diet, but what are the options? Starting with the basics, flake foods. Think of these as the bread and butter for most aquarium fish. They float around and our neon buddies love to snatch them up. The cool thing, quality flake foods come loaded with all the good stuff. 
proteins, vitamins, and even some special blends to make those tetra colors pop. Then we've got pellet foods. They're like little nuggets of goodness that drift down slowly, so even the more laid back tetras can grab a bite. And guess what? They're neat, tidy, and jam packed with nutrition. Fancy a treat? Enter freeze dried foods like bloodworms and brine shrimp. They're kind of like the dried fruit of the fish world, all the goodness but with the water zapped out. Bonus, less chance of any nasty stuff getting into your tank. Mm. For those who like to see a bit of action during feeding time, live foods are the way to go. It's like a mini treasure hunt for the tetras, chasing down tasty morsels like daphnia or microworms. Not only are they fun, but they're also nutrient rich and give our fish a taste of the wild. If live foods are fresh produce, then frozen foods are the canned goods of the tetra world. Super convenient, and you get all the benefits without worrying about any unwanted germs. And lastly, let's not forget our greens. A little vegetable matter now and then, like some spinach or zucchini, can be a nice change of pace. It's like sneaking some veggies into a kid's meal. They might not need a lot, but it's good for them. Feeding these little glowy wonders isn't as simple as just tossing food into the tank. It's about tailoring their meals to their active, fast-paced lifestyle. When it comes to feeding schedules, imagine neon tetras as tiny athletes. They're always on the move and they burn energy super fast. So rather than one big meal that might leave them feeling sluggish, they're more into snacking throughout the day. The best approach, feed them twice a day, a bit of breakfast to kickstart their day and then a dinner to refuel. Aim to have their feeding last around two to three minutes. If there's food still hanging around after that, you might be giving them a bit too much. And too much leftover food isn't just a waste, it can muck up the water in the tank. If you're feeding flakes and pellets, think a pinch or two. Just make sure to crumble them up so they're easy for the Tetris to nibble on. When you're in the mood to spoil them with live or frozen foods, replace one of their regular meals. And every once in a while, if you're feeling adventurous, offer them a tiny piece of veggies to nibble on throughout the day. Just a heads up, any veggie leftovers need to be scooped out after a day to keep things fresh in the tank. Always keep an eye on how much your Tetras are eating. If there's always food left behind, consider dialing it back a touch. On the flip side, if they're scarfing everything down super quickly, maybe they could do with a smidge more. And remember, it's not just about the quantity of the food, but the quality. These little fish, with their captivating colors, put on quite a performance when it's time to bring the next generation into the world. Before the main event, it's crucial to tell the boys from the girls. It's a bit of a subtle art, as neon tetras aren't ones for flashy gender differences. Females in the neon tetra world are a touch curvier, especially when they're loaded up with eggs, so they'll look a bit more rounded. The males, they're sleeker, sporting a more streamlined look with a straighter body line. Once you've got that sorted, the theatre begins. When the mood strikes, you'll notice the males turning up the charm by intensifying their colours. Think of it as their way of dressing up for a date, and they don't just rally on their looks. Oh no, they've got movies too. They'll dance around, showing off with swift, darting moves, trying to catch the eye of a special lady. This courtship dance isn't just a two-step. Males will often chase after the females they fancy. It's not about being bossy, but more about playing hard to get. The chase is all about getting the female's attention and guiding her to the perfect spot for some alone time. Speaking of spots, if you've set the mood with some fine-leaved plants or a spawning mop in the tank, you'll likely find your tetra pairs gravitating there. It's all about ambiance for these fish. They look for quiet, cosy corners to get down to the business of egg laying. And when the magic moment arrives, the female will release her eggs and Mr. Wright will be right behind her, fertilizing them. You will also need to set the tank up in a way that is conducive to breeding. First up, the water. Just like we have preferences for our surroundings, neon tetras have their favorite water conditions for those special moments. They're fans of the slightly acidic vibe, so you'll want to aim for a pH level that dances between 5.5 to 6.5, and they like their water soft. Think spa-like conditions, with a hardness level hovering around 1 to 2 dGH. Now, what about the thermostat? To get them feeling all warm and fuzzy, consider turning up the heat a notch. A cosy 77 degree to 80 degree, 25 degree to 27 degree should do the trick, recreating those sultry breeding season vibes from back home in the wild. Lighting sets the mood. Neon tetras are a bit shy and prefer their romantic escapades under the cover of dim lighting. It's like their version of candlelight. If you can, try to mimic that early morning glow. 
akin to dawn, which is their prime time for romance in the wild. Plants aren't just for ambiance. Neon tetras like a little privacy when it comes to laying eggs. Those fine-leaved plants or spawning mops? They're like the cosy beds of the tetra world. Plants like java moss or kabomba double as both mood setters and functional egg-laying spots. And just like how we might prep for a date with a nice meal, neon tetras need some gourmet feeding before the big day. Get them in the mood with a menu of live treats like brine shrimp or bloodworms. Here's a pro tip. Play a little hard to get. Separate the guys and gals a few days before the big introduction. It builds anticipation, and when they reunite, sparks will fly. You can also try to trigger them with a water change with water slightly cooler than their tank. In the beginning, nature has it all sorted. For the first day after they hatch, neon tetrafry are content feeding on their yolk sacs, their very first meal. And just like newborns who nap a lot, these fry prefer things on the dim side, so keep the lights low. When they start exploring and swimming around, usually after a day or two, that's your cue to start feeding. Start them off with infusoria, those tiny critters perfect for tiny mouths. If you're feeling adventurous, you can grow infusoria at home or simply buy them. There are also specialised liquid fry foods available that are packed with all the good stuff. And as they grow over the week, introducing them to baby brine shrimp is like giving them a protein-packed treat. Clean water, non-negotiable. These little ones are more vulnerable to dirt and toxins than their adult counterparts. A daily splash of fresh, dechlorinated water, about 10% of the tank, keeps things fresh. And for filtration, think gentle. A sponge filter does the trick without the horror of fry being sucked in. Keep an eye on their growth journey. It's not just about ensuring they're eating well, but also spotting the early glimmers of their iconic neon tetra colours. If you see some fry that seem to be the runts of the litter, consider giving them their own space for a bit so they don't miss out on food. When they hit the three, four week mark, you can start introducing them to the world of adult food. Just ensure it's crushed up enough to fit their small mouths. And once they're about half an inch and proudly flaunting their neon colours, they're ready for the big league, your main tank. Just remember to introduce them slowly to their new home, ensuring they get used to the new water conditions. Navigating the waters of fish health can sometimes feel daunting, especially when your vibrant neon tetras are concerned. These radiant swimmers, while hardy, can sometimes succumb to diseases. First up, we have neon tetra disease. Even the name sounds ominous, right? This disease, though specific in its naming, doesn't discriminate and can affect other fish too. It's caused by a parasite and can creep into your tank through an infected new addition or even through live food. Some telltale signs include your tetra losing its signature color, swimming erratically, or developing a spine curvature, the hard pill to swallow. There's no known cure, but with swift action like quarantining affected fish and maintaining water quality, you can manage and prevent its spread. Then there's the pestering ick or white spot disease, likened to our common cold. This is caused by a protozoan parasite. Imagine your neon tetra sprinkled with white salt-like spots. That's ick for you. The good news? It's treatable. Elevating the tank temperature, medicating or even using aquarium salt can combat this disease. And just as we wash our hands frequently to avoid colds, maintaining tank cleanliness and quarantining new fish can keep ick at bay. Lastly, let's talk about fin rot. Picture a grand ship with torn sails. That's what fin rot does to your tetra's beautiful fins. Usually a result of bacterial infection, it's the ragged receding fins that give away this ailment. But don't lose heart. With the right medication, improved water conditions and gentle care, your tetra's fins can return to their glory. 